But first to Turkey, where the prominent exiled leader, Fatullah Gulen, has been named the world's top intellectual in an international poll. Gulen has been praised as a moderate Islamic leader with huge influence in his home country. But some say he wants to overthrow Turkey's secular order and create an Islamic state. Jody Sabral has more from Istanbul. Turkey can now boast one of the world's top intellectuals after a poll by Foreign Policy magazine awarded the title to Fethullah Gulen, who received more than half a million votes in an online ballot, a sign that his appreciation is far-reaching. Gulen is known for his moderate Islamic teachings and his tireless efforts to promote interfaith dialogue. He's written over 60 books, some of which explore Sufi concepts in Islam. Fethullah Gulen in the reason of his deserved popularity and the reason he was named top intellectual is his respect for all religions and all cultures, his thoughts of brotherhood among people, his commitment against war, tears and pain, the fight against hunger and education for all. There are really very few people committed to this kind of universal values in today's world. Gulen schools are quickly becoming a phenomenon in their own right, producing high achievers. The New York Times recently visited a Gulen school in Pakistan and noted that Turkish schools there were offering a more moderate Islamic teaching than local madrasas, something that is welcomed by communities there. Gulen-inspired media is also a success. In the newsroom of the country's highest circulated daily, one can see a cross-section of Turkish society. I met with the managing editor to get to the heart of their success. We are strictly in support of democracy. We are against any kind of intervention against uh, democracy. And we, we do not accept anything, I mean, any kind of fascism, or any kind of uh, ideological authoritarianism, whether it is coming from a religious background or coming from a secular background or coming from a nationalist background. So these are these are values, I guess, are appreciated by our readers. But there are opponents to Gulen, and this in the past has come in the form of the Turkish judiciary. In 2000, a state prosecutor accused Gulen of inciting his followers to plot the overthrow of the secular government, a crime that at that time was punishable by death. However, according to one law professor, Gulen fell victim to a broader problem in Turkey's judicial system. This a consequence of a soft military coup that ousted an Islamic-rooted government in 1997. There has been a serious problem in the Turkish judicial system since February 28, 1997. A new system was formed by the decisions of the Supreme Court, which is in contradiction with Turkey's constitutional system. But of course, this formation is not able to be changed in one day, or even within the existing laws, as it's something that goes beyond the law itself. Gulen followers will now breathe a sigh of relief, as he was cleared of all charges this week by Turkey's top court. This has now led to speculation as to whether he will return to his homeland. Fethullah Gulen daha önce de gelebilirdi Türkiye'ye. Herhangi bir engeli yoktu hukuki olarak, ama. E... Fethullah Gülen could have returned to Turkey earlier as there were no judicial obstacles. The court process of course has satisfied Fethullah Gülen and his followers. We are satisfied with the verdict. Regarding his return, we must consider his health problems, the ongoing problems in Turkey and the fact that Gülen misses his country deeply. I think he might come back in the near future. Turkey's ruling AK Party now faces a closure case charged with becoming a hotbed of anti-secular activity. So although Gulen may have been cleared, he may want to think twice before returning home, as it seems there are still elements within the state who he should be cautious of. Jody Sabral reporting for Eurofocus from Istanbul.